the rains retreat is over, the gatin has been spread. Now a lot of us are going to be going our separate ways. During the retreat we've depended on the good example of others around us to help us with the practice. And as you go your own way, you've got to be able to take that environment, take that sense of support inside you. You have to learn to be, as the Buddha said, your own island. And how do you become your own island? Well, you make the Dharma your island. There's a academic writer I was reading a while back saying the Buddha probably didn't want people to take refuge in him or the Dharma or the Sangha. Just take refuge in themselves. He simply tolerated it when people took refuge in the Purple Gem. That was the academic's idea. But the Buddha said over and over again, you've got to take the Dharma as your refuge. That's what it means to make yourself the refuge. In other words, you internalize the Dharma. There are good examples you've seen around you are for you to internalize. The bad examples you've seen around you are for you to take as lessons. This is what happens to people who don't practice well, or this is what they look like from the outside. You remind yourself, well, that's probably what I look like from the outside, too, if I have those qualities. What can I do to change those? But it's all in the old panaiko, bringing it inward and making it pertinent to what's actually going on in your mind. You can hear the Dharma night after night after night, and sometimes it's like water off a duck's back. It doesn't penetrate. And then maybe one or two little pieces will hit. But of course, the Dharma is not to be found just in the words. You see things around you. You see people's behavior. You notice cause and effect in their behavior. There's that famous interchange that John Mun had with Sumdhap Mahavirong, who's a scholarly monk from Bangkok, who's way up in the ecclesiastical hierarchy. He didn't have much use for the forest tradition. His, his teacher, Jokunu Bali, had been a very close friend of Ajahn Mun's and respected Ajahn Mun a lot, but the student had never really picked up on that respect, didn't understand any word Ajahn Mun would say sometimes in his Dharma talks because it didn't fit in with his ideas of what Dharma should be. And he challenged John Mun one time, saying, Here I am living in Bangkok with all these famous Dharma teachers around, and even then I find problems that come up in my own life that I, I can't solve and they can't solve. And where do you hear the Dharma out here in the woods? And John Mun said, he said, I hear the Dharma 24 hours a day except when I'm asleep. Every time a leaf falls, every time a bird calls. There's Dharma. And the monk was at a loss. He finally said, well, I guess you know how to listen. Well, that's what you've got to be as a Dharma practitioner, as a good listener. Listen with your eyes, listen with your ears and your nose and your tongue and your body and your mind to what's happening in terms of cause and effect. And remember to develop mindfulness. Mindfulness is not just being aware of what's happening and saying, oh, that's interesting, and let it pass, pass, pass. It means remembering. Remembering what's skillful, remembering what's not, remembering the lessons you've learned. Now, it helps to keep the mind still in order to be able to remember. Because if you're running around not paying attention to things, or running around paying attention to things to the exclusion of what's actually going on. Again, you're not going to be able to remember what happened, because you just saw it in passing. So you make the mind still. That's the first condition for listening. It's when you want to listen for a far and distant sound. You try to make yourself as quiet as possible. And it's the same here, listening for the Dharma all the time. It's there. It's like all the radio waves going through the air, the TV waves, and whatever whatever else is going through us right now. They're broadcasting all the time. They're going through our very atoms all the time. It's simply a question of knowing how to tune in, getting the right apparatus so you can tune in to the right frequency. Or you want to tune into the Dharma frequency, which is basically the question, where is there stress here? What can I do to put an end to it? That's the question you always want to bring. This is the other quality you want to bring with you, in addition to mindfulness, is 
the ability to phrase things in terms of the right questions. The Buddha placed a huge emphasis on this. If you don't question things, you don't notice anything. How many centuries did they think, well, why do things fall to the earth? And the answer always was, it was because their nature. It was their nature. And it was just accepted. Until someone came along and started questioning that. What does that mean? For it's their nature to fall. Maybe the earth moves up, too. Maybe it's just the nature of matter that it attracts. It was by asking the question that he learned a lot of new things that became very, very useful. And without any questioning, nothing would have happened. We wouldn't have had all the, the benefits that come from the knowledge of gravity and the knowledge of the laws of motion. It happened because someone questioned something that everybody else accepted. And here you want to learn how to question your own mind when you think in a certain way. You have to question yourself, is this really the right way to think? What happens as a result? Have I ever noticed what the result of my thinking is? All too often we just get so involved in our thought worlds and so involved with a set of values that we don't see the impact that it has around us. I was reading an article a while back about the computer and software revolution. Ground Zero is up there in Silicon Valley. And they talk about creating a whole new world where everything's going to be wonderful and all this information is going to be right at our fingertips. And this one writer went in and said, okay, what is it like right around the areas where these people live? And then the poor people are getting pushed off to the side. And the corporations are not paying their taxes. All kinds of stuff is going on on the side that nobody notices because they're all too wound up in all the wonderful things they're doing. Well, this is a good metaphor for the way we all are, in the sense that we have our plans. This should be like that. That should be like this. Well, wait a minute. What are you doing? What are the side effects of your thoughts? What are the side effects of your actions and your, and your words? Where is the stress? What's causing the stress? You have to keep looking in, in, in. So those are the questions you want to bring. Keep looking back on your own behavior. Where is there something that can be improved? Where am I still sloppy? Because it's in our sloppiness that we tend to slough over things. We think we speak in certain ways and act in certain ways and think in certain ways. Well, everybody else does. It must be okay. Well, no. Everybody else is out there swimming around in some sorrow all the time. You really have to sort things out. Okay, what are the old habits I've learned that are good? Which ones are not good? Again, it's just a system of Buddha's questions that helps point you in the right direction and your willingness to keep asking those questions of yourself. So it's in this way that you listen to the Dharma, wherever you are, in good surroundings and unconducive surroundings. The Dharma is still there. The, les the lessons may be different, but there are lessons. And if you know how to listen, you'll hear them. And as the Buddha said, after listening, you take it and you think it over. You weigh things. His word for weighing means weighing what you're doing against what you know of the Dharma, weighing what you've noticed, what you know of the Dharma, and figure out what needs to be done. This is when you can learn to be self-reliant and have yourself as an island because you're trying to turn yourself into one big hunk of dharma. All your attitudes, all your actions. This is how you learn how to depend on yourself. You take the virtues of the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha and you bring them in. And you do that by imitating the Buddha. He was the sort of person who questioned himself all the time. As a young prince, he noticed he was suffering. He didn't blame his father, he didn't blame his mother, he didn't blame the surroundings. He realized, I'm looking for happiness in the wrong place. What if I were to look in another place? And that set the pattern for his entire quest. He'd run up against a wall. Okay, what 
What am I doing wrong? That was always the question. What am I doing wrong? What other way could I act? What other way could I think? And it was in asking those questions, using his ingenuity to come up with answers, and then testing the answers. Against that series of questions about stress and the ending of stress. That's why he taught stress and the ending of stress. Because that's the framework that helps sort everything out. That's the frequency of the Dharma. Try to tune into it as much as you can, as consistently as you can. <laughs>